Good evening, and welcome to Differential Equations and Modeling. This is a course uh, specifically designed for Davenport University students. Uh, Davenport University in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan and throughout Michigan is a school that, uh, that uh, has a lot of business students, tech students, uh, and some uh, um, urban education program and also uh, uh, medical er areas. And so we don't have engineering and don't have uh, fields that uh, require a lot of kind of the higher level mathematics that you would have. So this course is meant for students that want to take a course in differential equations but won't be going on into an intensive engineering program. So it's somewhat unique as a, um, as an in as a differential equations course in particular um, most importantly, it, it, it's not meant to give you lots of different techniques that would be used maybe in upper level courses. Uh, all the techniques that we show here are ones that are used in this course and you'll see them used right as we, as we explain them. So it's kind of self-contained in that way. It's also self-contained in the sense that uh, instead of requiring a Calc 2 and a Calc 3 background, this one only requires Calc 1. All the material that you need from Calc 2 and Calc 3, which involves some um, finding antiderivatives and also a little bit of uh, partial derivatives, we will teach as you need it. So kind of teach as you go. So it's self-contained in that sense. And then uh, lastly, other, other courses do this too, but this one especially so maybe. Uh, we, everything that we do in this course is, is motivated by real world examples. I, I want to teach you not so much mathematics in this course as much as to see the connection between the real world and the world of mathematics. And the key to that connection is the word let. As soon as you in fifth grade say let X be the age of Pam and let Y be the age of her brother Bill and Bill is twice as old as Pam and there's some of their ages is 50 then you try to figure out what their ages are. And you, as soon as you use that word let, you have done the magic connection that connects mathematics with the real world. And so we'll be doing that throughout this course and, uh, and you'll see how it can be used not just to solve a simple little problem like that, somewhat uninteresting, but very interesting problems. Problems that help us uh, understand the world, be able to predict what's happening in the world, and uh, you know all the things that you see around you from uh, rockets and, and uh, buildings and automobiles and whatnot all have relied on differential equations. Probably more than anything else, differential equations is the area of mathematics that connects the real world with the world of mathematics. So, uh, so uh, by the way, uh, this uh, uh, series is going to follow uh, my textbook which I've written and the textbook is entitled uh, Differential Equations and Modeling. And if you're interested, you can get it from me. I have a PDF of it, and I will send it to you. Uh, all you have to do is uh, write me, Timothy, just my name, Timothy dot Pennings, P-E-N-N-I-N-G-S, at gmail.com. And I will send you uh, the, uh, the book and, uh, and the the, the um, th this uh, course is meant to uh, basically follow the book. I'm not going to try to do everything exactly from the book, but it basically takes it section by section and, um, and goes through uh, the book that way. And so we're going to be hitting uh, first order, differential equations. Uh, th these words don't even mean anything to you at this point. And, uh, and linear and second order linear and systems of equations and various things that you typically see in a differential equations course. So that's where we're headed. So timothy.pennings at gmail.com. And my apologies, this is all part of my kitchen calculus series. And it is actually from my kitchen. The only real problem is there's a little bit of glare on the board, but I, I can't do anything about that. So uh, I, think, I think you'll be able to live with it. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> here's, the first, here's the first line from my textbook. It says, when you take a hot pizza tray from a 450 degree oven, what happens to its temperature? Obviously it cools eventually to the temperature of the room, but how fast does it cool? Supposing the room temperature to be 70 degrees, draw a graph of the temperature versus time 
does your graph show the so and so? I won't go any farther than that. Okay, so I'm going to take that and run with it. So let's ju let's just think about that. Suppose you do. You take you have yourself an oven that's 450 degrees, and uh, this would be time right here, and this is the temperature right here. We'll let capital T stand for temperature. Aha! See, I just used that word. Let capital T of small t equal the temp of the pizza tray at time t, where you have to be clear that time zero is when you take it out of the oven. Okay? So time equal to zero is when you remove it from oven. Okay, so you, you have a pretty good sense of what, what's going to happen here. Uh, you take the tray out, it's 450 degrees, so here's 450 right there. And so it's the temperature of the oven. And of course, it's going to cool to the temperature of the room. There's no reason for it to ever go cooler than the room. Uh, and, uh, and so it's, it's say, it's, this is 70 degrees, this is Fahrenheit right there. And so there's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And so you think, okay, it's going to eventually cool down to that temperature. So what would you think the graph is going to look like? If you were just to, if you were just to draw a graph and uh, that you think would be a pretty good guess as to what the temperature would be after, this could be after 30 seconds and one minute and a minute and a half and two minutes and two and a half minutes, three, there's four, there's five minutes, there's six and so on. After say six minutes, what would... What would the temperature look like? So we agree it's going to go cool. What would it do? Do you think it's going to do something like this? Does that seem reasonable? Just basically go straight down to, uh, to 70? Uh, that's about as simple of a, of a graph as you could have that would head from 450 to 70. What's wrong with that? Why would you expect it to be something different than that? Uh, there's all sorts of times, by the way, as I lecture, if I'm actually in class, I would stop and let people answer. I have no idea what's going on in, in your brain, so uh, feel free, uh, if you want, to s pause the video and spend a moment or two uh, pondering it, and then come on back and get my answer, okay? I'm not going to spend give you a lot of time to think about it on here, but go ahead and press the pause button. Um, I'll tell you something right away about my method of teaching. Here's your brain right here. If I teach you something that you haven't had a chance to think about, it kind of goes and just dribbles off the side like this. Some of it sinks in, but most of it dribbles. On the other hand, if you wrestle and, and, and kind of invested yourself in the question that I'm an at answering, uh, that I'm asking, you essentially form a little divot in your brain. Can you feel it there? It's actually there at the top of your brain. You've made yourself a little divot. And then when you get the answer, ah, you get this aha feeling. Ah, that's it. So, uh, so that's, I'm, one, I, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. If you're serious about it uh, and you want to really learn this, take that opportunity and, and, and stop the video and uh, take a moment to become invested in it. See if you can figure it out on your own. So anyway, back to this. So what's going on here? Th this isn't right because initially the temperature of the pan is going to cool off kind of fast and then it's going to kind of slow down and eventually get closer and closer to, to, to 70. So instead of looking like that, just, just, from, just from experience, you might think it might do something more like this. Initially it's going to go down kind of fast and then as you get closer and closer to 70, it's going to still cool down, but it, it, it will be cooling down at a slower rate. Do you agree with that? That's, that's roughly what you'd expect, just from experience. And Isaac Newton, he was uh, m maybe the greatest mathematician scientist who ever lived, uh, he, he noticed the same thing. And so uh, he did a little bit of, of thinking about it and realized that, that probably what is the case, and I'm not sure, I don't know exactly the history of this, uh, how much research he did, but eventually he came up with a realization that the rate, the rate of temperature change, the 
rate of temperature change of the object, in this case the pan, okay, of the object, is proportional to the difference in temps between the object and the the surrounding area, which would be the room or whatever the, the ambient uh, temperature is that it's it come out in. So it comes out into the room, and so there's your, there's your uh, I'll just say, and the, and the surrounding, surrounding medium, how about? Okay, doesn't that seem reasonable? That the rate of change of temperature, the, the rate at which it's going to change, is proportional to the difference in temperature. So you see that already happening right here. See this? It starts off at seven at 450. Here's here's 70, and so the difference is that great. And when the difference is that great, notice that the slope of this line is pretty steep. That's what the rate of change is. The rate, the rate of change. That's the that's the derivative. That's the that's the slope of that thing. So the slope is going to be pretty great when this difference is great. As you move over here. Now the difference isn't so large, and so that slope isn't so large. And then you get over here, and now the difference is even less, and so the, the slope is even less. And as you get closer and closer, so that this difference goes to zero, notice that the slope also goes to zero. So that's, that's what Isaac Newton uh, discovered. And as I say, I'm not sure whether he got it just by totally by uh, using experiments and, and noticing that it happened or whether he had some deeper reason for being able to explain why that would be the case. But it, it does turn out to be true, okay? This turns out to be true. It's called Newton's Law of Cooling, okay? Newton's Law of Cooling. Okay, so once you have that, now the challenge is how do you write that in mathematical language, okay? We've already used the word let right here. How do we expand on that and, and extend it in order to take this, this principle right here and write it in mathematical language so that we can then work with it and, find, and, and, and evaluate and, and, uh, and uh, solve equations and that sort of thing? Well, let's do it together again. So we already have, and this is why it's so important to write this down, because you want to write everything down so that it makes, makes the steps of solving it as easy as possible. If you just have a bunch of mush in your mind, you're not going to get very far. If you write down everything carefully of what you have, then, then you basically you want to go from, from here to here, and you want to make these steps as small as possible. And every time you write something down carefully, you've basically allowed yourself to make those smaller steps rather than just have to think about something, uh, a great big step in your mind. So here it is, and once that's there, I say, okay, the rate of change, okay, the rate of change, that's the derivative. So the rate of change of the temperature, so I'm going to write D capital T DT. Aha, agree? There's the rate of change, the derivative, the rate of change of the temperature is proportional to if two things are proportional, that means that they uh, are equal uh, as long as there's a, a, a constant there, right? Uh, the the one, 1, 2, 3 is proportional to 3, 6, 9. This set is proportional to this set because all you have to do is take these numbers and multiply it by 3 to get those numbers. So that's what it means to be proportional. So as long as two things are proportional, if you put a, a, a constant in there, then you have equality. So there's your proportionality constant is equal to what? The difference in temperature, or the difference, that's going to be a subtraction there, uh, between the object, so here's the temperature of the object right there. I could put T of T there, but I'm just going to uh, leave that small T out just to, I, I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll put it in there. T of T minus the temperature of the, amp, the room. So we need something to stand for the temperature of the room. So let's let, I think, I can't remember, I'm going to use beta in the book. Beta is the temperature of the room. OK, 
Okay, why do I use beta? I have a very special personal reason for using beta. It's because betas are a lot of fun to make. Okay, you start from the bottom and you go like that. They're just kind of a fun, fun Greek letter to make. So there you go, right there. So now we have a differential equation. This, by the way, this is called a differential equation. A differential equation is an equation which includes a function and one of its deriv uh, and and or some of its derivatives. So here you have an equation, and it includes both the function in this case and it includes one of the derivatives. You could have an, uh, a differential equation that maybe just has a derivative without even the function. That's fine, as long as you have at least one of the derivatives, first, or second derivative, whatever. You've got yourself a differential equation. That's all there is to it. We'll, cut, we'll, we'll write down all these formal definitions uh, in the next section. So there it is, right there. So once you have that differential equation, now the question is, how do you solve it? Okay, how do you solve it? And so uh, this, this kind of differential equation right here is called a first order. It's called first order because uh, the, the highest derivative is just the first derivative. Uh, we're going to be seeing some later on that are sec uh, second, uh, second, uh, uh, second derivatives and third and fourth, higher derivatives, but this one is just uh, uh, first derivative. And it also has a special name, it's called separable. And the reason we call it separable is because algebraically, look at what you can do. You can take this portion right here and divide both sides of the equation by it, and you can multiply both sides of the equation by dt. So watch what I'm going to hear, here again. I'm going to get capital dt divided by, I'm just going to write it as t minus b, or uh, beta rather, sorry, beta, is equal to k dt. There it is right there. And now we are going to solve this differential equation by a technique uh, that you learn in Calc 2, which is just basically finding the antiderivative of both sides. By the way, I'm going to come back and talk about this a little bit more later. So uh, if you have questions at this point, hold on to them and you might get them answered as we go. So I'm going to assume that you have um, uh, a Calc 1 background that includes, you know, doing simple, simple in, uh, antiderivatives and using uh, substitution. And, and I'm not going to take time to do all of these for you. Basically, I'm going to note this, that the derivative of the bottom is up on top. And if ever you have a situation where the derivative of the bottom is on top, then uh, it's just going to be the, the natural log of the bottom. So right here, we're going to get the natural log of the, the actually it's the absolute value of, of the denominator, t minus b. And by the way, some of these details that I, I, I go too long a field if I, if I uh, explained all these details in the lecture, these things are in the, in the textbook so you can, you can uh, learn about them there. I'm going to gloss over some of those and just by basically hit the highlights here. So you're going to get the natural log of this is equal to, if you take, take the antiderivative of this side, is just have a constant, and so its antiderivative is just going to be constant times t. Now, both of these are just asking for an antiderivative. So I could put a constant of integration here, and I could put a constant of integration there. And the difference between two constants is yet another constant. So instead of having constants everywhere, let's just throw a constant on one side, because uh, all, all we need there is, is, is one constant. So there we've taken the antiderivative of both sides. Okay, now, the main problem I've got here with, with um, this kitchen calculus is I wish I had uh, three boards that I could keep going between. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to do some erasing here. So, um, with apologies, give myself a little more room here in order to solve this. And so now let's go ahead. How do we how do we finish uh, and solve this thing for capital T? The next thing I can do here is to uh, take e to both sides. Basically, I'm going to just take e to both sides like this. And when you do that, 
the x the e to the ln of anything they're inverse functions so they undo each other and so you just end up with t minus beta and over on this side you're going to get e to the kt plus c everyone agreed i'm going to just make sure my computer is still actively Recording me here. Yep, it is. Okay, very good. And so we want to solve this thing for capital T. What's the next step? Well, let's see. We can do uh, one of several things first. Let's first of all write this like this. We're going to write it as e to the kt times e to the c. That's a rule of algebra there. And then, in order to get rid of this absolute value here, uh, if the absolute value of x is equal to 5, that means x is equal to plus or minus 5. So I can get rid of the absolute value here and just write t minus beta is equal to plus or minus, I'm going to bring this e to the c out front, e to the kt, like so. Okay? And finally, I'm going to notice that c is some sort of constant, so e to the c is a constant, and when I take either the positive or negative of that, that's going to be a constant. So instead of writing it like a fancy, messy thing like that, I'm just going to write it like this. T minus beta is equal to, let's just say, A times E to the KT. This thing here is just some constant. We'll just call that A, where A could either be positive or negative. And finally, I can, I can uh, add beta to both sides. And I get, now I'm going to write it as t of t, just to be really clear that I've got myself a function of time here. The temperature at any time t is going to be a e to the kt plus beta, right there. So there is our solution to our first differential equation that we encountered in this course, there's the solution, and this is going to be a uh, type of solution that, that we uh, use for lots of other differential equations as well, other ones that are first order separable, are all going to be able to be done this way, okay? So, we'll, we'll get into that more later, but for right now, let's continue on with this example just to see how we can really make predictions about the real world uh, through the use of differential equations. So let's suppose that, um, what did we say? We said at time equal to zero, this uh, thing was 450 degrees. And let's say that after uh, two minutes, let's say that after two minutes, the temperature has dropped to, I don't care, uh, I've chosen different numbers for the book, uh, I'll just, doesn't, let's just make it easy. Let's say uh, 300 degrees, okay? I have no idea how, how reasonable that is. I'm just choosing numbers that are kind of nice. Uh, more than likely, it's cooled actually quite a bit more by two minutes, but I'll just, we'll call it two minutes just to make, make it nice. Okay, and again, remember that our, our beta is equal to 70. Okay, so that's 70 right there. So, so there, there's what we know. It came out of the oven like that, and after two minutes, it's now 300 degrees. And given those two pieces of information, can we uh, answer other questions about it? Uh, maybe we want to know how, what will be the temperature after five minutes? Or maybe we'll ask the question, when will, when will, when will it be 100 degrees? Maybe this thing will be, uh, you can handle it safely after it's 100 degrees, so you want to know when it's 100, that sort of thing. So, uh, so let's, let's answer those two questions. Let's, let's say, what's... Um, Find, find t of 5, and also uh, when will it be 100 degrees. Okay, I'm going to get myself a black marker. These, the bane of my existence is markers. seem to work all that well. This is a brand new one, so this should work. Okay, so again, I'm going to have to erase this. We've got our, we've got our solution right there. 
So let's see once if we can't answer those two questions. You'll notice that you need quite a bit of algebra in order to be, uh, be in this course, so I'm going to assume that you know your algebra as we go. So, first of all, we know this information, so we need to be able to find these constants in order to be able to do all the rest of it. So we need to find, let me just say that up here, find uh, alpha, I'm sorry, A, K, and we already know beta. And beta is equal to 70. Okay, so we already know beta, but we need to find those other ones. So let's get started. So here's what we know. We know t of 0, if you stick in a 0 here, you're going to get a, e to the 0 times k is going to be 0, agreed? I'm not going to take a line for each one of these things. 0 times k is going to be 0, and then you're going to have plus 70. And we know at time equal to 0 that that's equal to 450. Agreed? That's 450. So now we can find A. So A is easy enough to find. A is equal to 450 minus 70 is what? 380, I believe, right? 380. Okay? So we found that. So let's go ahead and show our progress here. So it's going to be 380 E to the KT plus 70. Okay, now we need to find k. Okay, that's the second, that's the last uh, constant we need. So what do we have here? We have another piece of information. And so just like back in fifth and sixth grade, you needed two pieces of information in order to find both variables, if you remember story problems like that. And same thing here. We have two pieces of information, and we can find both of the variables. So let's see if we can find it. We know after five, no, after two minutes, it's 300. So, okay, so now here's what I'd suggest. Uh, pause the video and see if you can do this yourself before you watch me do it, okay? You want, you, you want to either convince yourself that you know how to do it or you want to wrestle with it and get stuck on it so that when I do it, uh, you, you, you get that aha feeling. Ah, that's how to do it. If you just watch, if you just watch me and convince yourself saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I could have done that, you're cheating. You're cheating yourself, okay? Be, take it seriously. Don't, don't watch me do it and pretend that you know it. You don't know it. You don't know it unless you can do it yourself, okay? It's just like if I show you how to juggle. You don't know how to juggle until you do it yourself, okay? You can watch me. You can see the definition. You can all that stuff, but until you actually can do it yourself, don't pretend that you know it. So same thing here, okay? So here we go. So uh, T of 2. So T of 2 is going to be 380 e t is equal to 2 so it's going to be 2k plus 70 and we know that t of 2 is equal to 300 okay so now we need to solve that for k so how can we do it we'll first subtract 70 from both sides and we'll get 230 is equal to 380 e to the 2k we have to solve it for k so now we'll divide by uh, 380 and we'll get 23 over 38 is equal to e to the 2k okay how do you solve that for k you now take the ln of both sides if you take the ln of both sides okay, I'm gonna go ln here ln here the ln of e to anything they're inverse functions again so they undo each other so you get your 2k is equal to the ln of 23 over 38. Everyone agreed? And finally, k, of course, is equal to ln of 23 over 38, all divided by 2. Okay? So there's your k. I would suggest you keep that K just like that throughout the entire problem. As soon as you put it into your calculator and get uh, whatever you get for an answer, you, you've taken the approximation of it. And, and uh, then everything that you do with it from then on is gonna be an approximate answer. If you keep it just like that, you've got all the information right there. You haven't approximated it at all. 
and then when you get your final answer, you can approximate it as much or as little as you want, okay? So keep it like that. The one thing you should notice is that this number here is less than 1 in size, right? 23 over 38 is less than 1, and you should know that the LN looks something like this. Here's the LN graph. There's a 1 right there. For any number less than 1 in size, the LN is a negative number. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because as you take e to a negative number times t, then what happens when you take e to a negative number? That's the thing that where e uh, uh, decays like that, okay? That's, that's the kind of a, of a graph you have. If you have e to a positive value, then it grows exponentially like that. Here's an exponential decay like that. So that's, again, something you should bring with you from pre-calculus or calculus. Okay? So there we go. So now we have that. So now we can answer one of our questions. First of all, what's the temperature going to be at time equal to 5? So we can do it. And so let's actually calculate it here. T of 5 is going to be, it's going to be, a, uh, well, here it is right here. It's going to be uh, 380 E to the um, K, which is this right here, which is ln of 23 over 38, divided by 2, it's all that, uh, times, uh, in our case, 5, t is equal to 5, right, times 5, and then we add 70 to that. And I've got myself a trusty calculator here someplace. So, we got an HP 10, 10C, doggone it, best calculator ever made. Um, so let's see here, 23 divided by 38, take the ln of that, divide that by 2, multiply that by 5, take e to that, multiply that by 3, 80 and add 70 to that and I get 178.30 okay 178.30 degrees I guess we're going degrees Fahrenheit here okay so that's that's when the temperature would be 178 and again Notice that uh, that doesn't seem quite reasonable because uh, th this, I think it's going to cool a lot more than 300 by the time you get to two minutes here. So I, I just, as I say, chose, chose numbers that were going to be easy to work with. Okay, that's all good. So now let's answer the second question. When will it be 100 degrees? So now we have our same thing. We have our 380 e to the ln of... 23 over 38 times t, all divide, that's all divided by 2, plus 70, right? That's our, that's our, um, that's our formula, 380e to the kt, there's our k right there, uh, plus 70, and we want to know when will that be equal to 100, okay? So how do we solve that? Can you do it? Again? Don't make me continue to tell you this. I know stu I've been teaching for 40 years, so I know that it's going to take take you take some pushing to get you to turn off the, the the video and do it on your own. But please do it. Okay. Now, hopefully, you're back again. You're going to get subtract 70 from both sides, and you're going to get a 30 here. And then, if you divide 380 from both sides, you're going to get this. Of course, you can divide both sides by 10, right there. And now you need to solve it for t. So you take the ln of both of these, and the ln of e to anything, let me do it over here, the ln of e to anything is just that thing, so it's going to be the ln of 23 over 38 times t divided by 2, and on this side, a little bit sloppy there, you're going to get equals the ln of 3 over 38. Okay, now it's just algebra. These are all just numbers here. 
So T is equal to what? Multiply both sides by 2. You're going to get 2 times the ln of 3 over 38, all divided by, uh, multiply both sides by 2, and I divide both sides by the ln of 23 over 38. Like so, and again, let's see once what we get. Uh, can you? What would your What would your guess be? You should always always guess, and then and then make see once if your answer is somewhat close. If it took five minutes to get this low, I'm going to say maybe maybe ten minutes. I'm just going to guess ten. Let's see once how close I am. So uh, here we go. So um, I'm going to go three, enter thirty eight, divide. Then I'm going to take the ln of that, and I'm going to multiply that by 2, and the top is a negative 5.08. And now I think I can do this okay. I'm going to go uh, 23, enter, 38, divide, then take the ln of that, and I get negative, oh man, I'm going to be pretty close, 0.50. And then I think I'm just going to go divide. Yep. Oh, man, dog got it. I am impressed. I hope you are impressed. Okay, keep coming back for more uh, help from me because I was able to come within uh, what percentage of that? <laughs> it came pretty close. I said 10 minutes. Look at there, 10.11 minutes. And I was not cheating. I hadn't done that before. Okay, so there you go. So there's, um, there's the first lesson. And uh, that corresponds to section 1.1, a hot example in our textbook. And the textbook, uh, you know, talks about a few other things and gives you some problems and that sort of thing. But this is the main guts of it right here. So in the next section, it's called definitions and terms. Uh, we're going to actually kind of define out. Here's here's these different words that we're going to be using throughout the course. And, uh, and uh, you should become familiar with them so you know them when you hear them. Okay, so very good. Thanks for, thanks for joining and we'll look forward to seeing you in future lessons.